Welcome to Almost Here, Round the Corner of Future Technology podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies poised to transform our lives for better or worse are the focus of this podcast. Almost Here means these technologies are now here and starting to be used, or just around the corner, from Bitcoin to artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more. Hello, this is Richard Jacob with Future Tech Podcast. My guest today is Dong Lin, and we're talking about uh, some research work he's doing, uh, making a graphene aerogel that's uh, 99.8% air, but it's the strongest steel, so it's very interesting material. So Dong, tell me, uh, you know, hello, how you doing, and thanks for coming, first of all. Uh-huh, uh-huh, sure. Yeah. Well, tell me tell me a little bit about the research. Uh, what, what university are you at, and uh, how did you get involved in this research? Oh, okay. So I'm in Kansas State University working as like a assistant professor. So my research is doing 3D printing of graphene aerogel. So basically, uh, we developed a new technology to do 3D printing of graphene aerogel. So what we what we what we do is like this: we disperse the graphene oxide into the DI water. So we have the um, graphene oxide suspension, and then we do inkjet printing. We eject. The suspension onto a cold plate, so the the temperature on the cold plate is uh, adjustable from negative 70 degrees C to zero right. degrees C, and then so basically we do 3D printing of ice, right? So we print the ice with graphene oxide, and then we do freeze drying. We remove the ice, we leave the graphene oxide porous with porous. So and then we we do redox heat uh, thermal treatment. We reduce the graphene water to graphene. By doing this, okay. we can do 3D printing of graphene. Huh. So you have to do it very cold on a very cold substrate, but you can 3D print graphene structures doing it this way is what you mean, right? Yeah, that's true. What's, um, for people that don't know, can, what is graphene made of and uh, why is it such an amazing material? Oh, okay. So um, uh, let me see. So. Graphene, of course, is a very successful material, right? Uh, people win Nobel Prize uh, based on uh, funding graphene, discovering graphene. Uh, however, it's a, it's a kind of like a significant challenge uh, for like, uh, because graphene is very small, it's like a micro scale. So it's, it's kind of a challenge to extend the micro scale application to macro scale. So graphene energy is one of the solutions. However, uh, most of the fabrication method to, to fabricate the graphene energy they can only make like cylinder and cubic. It's based on the shape of the mold. So there is kind of mm. like an urgent need for us to develop a technique that we can manipulate the 3D structure, macro structure of graphene energy. So that's what we are doing. That's why we are interested in 3D printing graphene energy. Yeah, so what, what kind of uses would the uh, 3D printed uh, graphene energy have? What, mm-hmm. what are you going to do with it? Okay. Uh, for example, if we want like um, we know battery, right? There are a lot of like battery applications. However, uh, 3D printing offers the freedom for us to design the personal battery materials for us. For example, I'm collaborating with a professor in chemistry department. We're trying to do 3D printed graphene MOS2 aerogel for uh, 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 sodium ion battery. So that's kind of like a energy. Energy is kind of like the uh, one of the major applications. Thermal insulation, chemical sensing. Uh, okay. That's all. That's other like a major application. Well, what are what are the properties of graphene that make it so good for energy generation or for sensing? Oh, okay. Is for it all a superconductor, the or what, what's good about it? Mm-hmm. Uh, for uh, first is uh, how to say. Graphene itself is a good material, right? And uh, our method provides like hierarchical por- porosity. So that the, the suspension can uh, get inside the energy and it's kind of like in the connected network. So it's all con- uh, connected and it's conductive. And uh, the reason why we put a sod- uh, how to say, uh, MOS2 onto the graphene because we can do sodium ion battery because uh, most people they do like a lithium ion battery, but lithium is kind of like uh, how to say, it's not that um, how to say the, the the matter itself is kind of like rare in, on Earth, but the sodium is kind of like a how to say you can find a lot of sodium all around us. So that's why so kind of like a, this kind of application. Okay. 
<clears throat> again, what, what are the properties of graphene that make it uh, better than, than most other materials? Is it, oh, okay. is it, is it actually uh -huh. a superconductor or is it... Um... It's conductive. It's light. It's, mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, the, stru the structure is kind of like you can maintain the structure. Okay. All right. Um, how strong is it? Can it, I mean, it take a tremendous amount of weight or, you know, why, why make an aerogel? Is it just because uh, it's extremely light but extremely strong? Is that the uh -huh. whole point? Yeah, that's very interesting. Uh, so we published paper in 2016 on advanced materials. Actually, we, we developed a strategy. We can compare the graphene energy to 99% and then it can be fully recovered. The what do you mean about fully recovered? Is, yeah, so you can compress the energy to 99%. Oh. And then, for example, if you have graphene energy, the, the height is one millimeter. So you can compress mm. the one millimeter energy to one centimeter. And then it's fully recovered. I think that's kind of like amazing, right? But it's the first time we can yeah. achieve this high compressive capability. Has anyone been able to um, create graphene structures that are large, you know, like graphene bricks uh -huh. or much larger structures that you could use? Like what's uh, the, yeah, the largest I mean, size graphene you've been able to make so far? Uh, we are not trying to make the largest one. We're trying to improve the mechanical property and we are trying to reduce the density. Of the graphene energy. Why do you the reduce the density so much? I mean, isn't it light enough already? What What would be the benefit of you know, uh, continuing to reduce the density more and more? Oh, okay, of course. For example, if we want to achieve one purpose, so if we can achieve, for example, we achieve the purpose, we use this steel. For example, we use one kilogram of of like a steel, and then if we can mm. use graphene, only one gram. Of course, we want to use graphene, right? So that's kind of like the main purpose. If we can uh, maintain the problem, then we can reduce the density. Of course, we want to reduce the density. I mean, isn't graphene um, so much less dense already that it's enough? Or are you, are you trying to push the limits with it? Or is it not uh, uh, yet effective? You know, what, like, why oh, okay. keep going? So that's kind of like a scientific, how to say, scientific question. It's not like an application question because we, are always want, we, we always want to push the limit break the records. So that's why. Mm. That's kind of like scientific uh, uh, meaning. Okay, so what, right now is graphene commercially available? Is it being used in uh, certain applications? Yes, of course. Oh, like like what are some examples where graphene is being used? Mm, I think the major application, one of the major applications is like uh, energy. The second application is like uh, we use graphene to reinforce the metal. That's a lot of like papers published on like a, a graphene reinforced metal composite. Oh, okay. And how much how much stronger does it make metal composites, for instance? Mm, from my publication, it can increase at least fifty percent for steel, for iron, for iron. Sorry. For example, the honey is we improve like a, we improve like fifty percent by by adding graphene. And then if we further do uh, surface processing, we can improve like one hundred percent at least. Wow. And it it adds amazing, right? no weight. Yeah, I know uh, we didn't add too much. We only add like a two percent weight ratio. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about an energy? Why is it important in energy we use? What does it do? I think one of my research, why my constant research on three D printing of like a graphene MOS two research is like this. We can use it for sodium iron battery. As I mentioned, sodium is kind of like a, uh, kind of like easy access material, but uh, this one is not. And of course, mm. we, we use energy everywhere. If we can save the, or improve the energy density, we can save the material. That's a huge market, hundreds of billions of dollars every year. So it makes the battery work more efficiently, or what, what benefits does it have in a battery, for instance? Oh, uh, okay. It's way, uh, how to say, more efficient and uh, with better mm. uh, battery performance. Okay. Any other uses uh, for graphene that you're working on? And I know you're trying to make it as uh, less dense as possible, but any other any other uses that you see it's useful for? Uh, right now, I focus on energy device. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we do if not you have keep... yet. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. What, what, what will happen if you keep making it less less and less dense? Essentially, it will be airborne, right? It, it would just float around. I mean, is it right now? Is it lighter than air, or, or uh, mm -hmm. how how dense could you make it? Uh, right now we can make it 0.5 million gram per cubic centimeter. So if you, I'm not, I'm not sure whether you you notice or not, we can make, uh, 
uh, our 3D printing graphic engine is the world's least dense 3D printing structure. And uh, it's probably the, how to say, uh, it probably the, uh, how to say, our 3D graphic engine is the least dense material in the United States, probably. Wow. Uh, have you thought about going the opposite way and making it super dense? And would that do anything? No, no, we didn't try to <laughs> no. do that. No, we didn't try to do that. Do you think there <laughs> would be any, benef ben any benefit of doing that? Would there be any benefit of doing that? Or is more benefit of making it less dense? L less, I guess. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Do you think it could be used as a coding? I guess yeah, like if, if it was... sure. People do, people are doing this for coding. Uh, for example, because uh, for example, uh, people use it to do to how to say remove eyes because we can add the current on the graphene. For example, if we coat coat the graphene on the airplane wing, and uh -huh. then we can heat it so that we can remove the eyes because the eyes oh, on conductive. airplane fr uh, frame, wing. Sorry, it's kind of like a problem. Right. Right, there's ice in the wings you can't take off. Mm -hmm. So the graphene is very conductive, and you could put a super thin layer on an airplane wing, for instance, and then put a current through it, and you can melt ice off. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay, very interesting. Is uh, as your graphene gets less and less dense, is it still maintain its conductivity, or does it get less conductive and more insulative? Mm, that's kind of like how to say, uh, uh, it's kind of like uh, there is a certain density. If you go down, then we may we may reduce the 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 the, the uh, how to say uh, uh, electric conductivity, and also we lose the structure integrity. So yes, you, of course you can go down, but uh, somehow you want to maintain kind of like a property. A property we may need to to keep keep uh, how to say keep a certain density. Right. Do you think you're at the limit of Making the least dense material, or you still have a ways to go. We still have way to go. We want to make oh. the wood lightest one, but uh, we it's, it takes some time. <laughs> we that's our dream. <laughs> well, once you make it the world's lightest, uh, the least dense substance, what would you do with it? What do you think a, a good application would be? Ah, uh, again, it's like a scientific challenge. It's not like a, mm. for for like application driven. Mm. Okay, gotcha. Well, are you the first to be able to 3D print graphene, or have other people 3D printed it as well? Okay, so we are the third group uh, in in the world to do 3D printing graphene as well, and uh, we are the second group in the United States. Okay, got it. Could uh, the graphene be used as a scaffolding for other materials if it's you know if it's light enough and uh -huh. I mean, going to be used in uh, where where, could, where do you think it could be used as a scaffolding? Oh, okay. Because it's so strong, it's so light. Strong and light. Um, there are a lot of applications. Uh, one of the applications is like this. There are a lot of applications to use like graphene as a scaffold. That's true. Uh, for example, chemical sensing. That's one of the applications we're using now. We can hmm, okay. we can we can detect the uh how to say the gas, uh, different gas in the air. Oh, to very low concentrations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With low concentration, yes, yeah, sure. What about in uh, medical devices? Will graphene be used for, uh, you know, to create 3D print organs or, or in medical devices like pacemaker? Does it does it go I well think, with the human body? I read some papers. They use uh, 3D printed graphene as scaffold for their culture. Yeah, that's possible. Okay, well, very good. Yeah, what's the best way for them to reach you? Uh, email. Email. Okay, very good. And wh what is your email? D O N G L at ksu.edu. Very good. Okay, Dong. Well, thank you for coming, and I, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. You've been listening to Almost Here, Around the Corner Future Technology Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Subscribe to this podcast, post a review, to discover more future technologies that are poised to transform our lives for better or worse, such as Bitcoin, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more.